you heard Hardik Patel there, he is lashing out at your party, repeating all that he has said in the letter from the chicken sandwiches which are organized, he claims for the top Congress leaders, obviously referring to Rahul Gandhi, to the fact that Rahul travels abroad, is not communicative, doesn't even condole with leaders when he claims his father died. How do you respond to what you've just heard? The man who you saw as a mascot to take on Mr. Modi has actually turned against you. You know, quite frankly, I don't want to make a specific comment on Hardik Patel. Uh, I think some of the allegations that he's making is of a man who's quit the Congress. And we've seen uh, what has led to this quitting of the Congress. You know, cases are against him, the state government moving to withdraw cases against him, the criminal cases. Uh, you obviously know what I'm referring to. So I'm not going to really comment on the statements that he's making because I can actually question the veracity of many of those statements, quite frankly. Uh, but this country is going to be led by two types of leaders. And without making personal aspersions at Hardik, I wish him all the very best with whatever he does. Uh, today he suddenly wants to serve the people and he's willing to ally with anybody who's going to give him this opportunity. What about ideological differences? What about the ideological war that we are fighting? There is a Hardik Patel and there is a Jignesh Mevani. And Jignesh has paid a huge price for sticking by and believing in an ideology and fighting for it, for which he's had to serve, you know, for which he was actually taken to jail, served with a fictitious bail, the court had to come down very heavily. We saw what happened and this happened with a sitting MLA. So this country is going to see two kinds of youth, two kinds of individuals. Mm -hmm. I believe that eventually the Jignesh Mevanis of the world are going to herald us into a country that we eventually believe in, into values that we stand for. Uh, I wish Hardik the very best, but I will say, and this is more tongue-in-cheek than anything, that I think most people who make the somersault mm -hmm. to be in the other camp, whose ideological differences vanish over a period of 24 hours, how do they make their peace with this? <coughs> today the BJP is polarizing, because today the BJP is divisive, today the BJP mm -hmm. is anti-youth, and tomorrow the BJP is all good. And I say that not just for Hardik, I also say that for leaders in Punjab who have quit. No, and but is there no introspection? No, no. Supriya Shine, while no, no. Supriya Shine, you have, ma'am, ma'am, you have every right to question Hardik somersaults, but is there no introspection? Is there no attempt to try and understand why are these young leaders leaving your party? It's not just Hardik. There are a series of young leaders, many of which were handpicked by Rahul Gandhi or are close to Rahul Gandhi. They've all left over the years. So with every departure, are you only going to blame that leader and say, look? It's got nothing to do with us. We are fine. Blame the leader. Blame these young leaders and their opportunism. All is well. No. How long is the Congress going to remain in this state of permanent no. inertia? Unlike many... No. No, Jarajdeep. Unlike many others, I do not think that the fault only lies with the other side. Of course, there is introspection required. Of course, mm -hmm. there is course correction required. We need to change many things within. And this Nav Sankalp Shivar was an attempt to do so. I think the democratic platform that it gave many a Congress women and men from all parts of the country to voice their concern as candidly as they did, I was really taken aback because I didn't think a political party gives you a platform like this. Having said that, and I am not, which is why I said I'm not casting aspersions, I'm sure they have their limitations and I'm sure the party needs to do soul searching and a real introspection and a course correction. But I will say one thing before I end my answer, that Indian democracy as we know it is being fundamentally reshaped. And there is, there is no denying that. I think arbiters of Indian democracy are increasingly partisan. I think levers of law enforcement are being pressurized, acting in a very partisan way. And more than anything else, Rajdeep, I think financial inducement has never been as brazen, as prominent and as unequal as we know it. Okay. So, whether it's outreach in terms of agencies, whether it's the ED, CBI or the police forces, did you ever imagine that a police force from Assam is going to come all the way to Gujarat to pick up an elected MLA, take him, file him with one fictitious case because he's granted bail in the other? I think our democracy is being fundamentally reshaped and it is not for the faint-hearted to okay, put up you, that fight. Okay, you made your and, point. I'm not casting you seem to be suggesting that there are a lot of metal. Man, yes. You made your point. You seem to suggest this is Sam, Dam, Danda, Bhed politics and in a sense democracy is being hollowed out. Do you really agree with that, Sanjay Jha? You've been suspended for speaking out and you've said that the Congress party is not recognizing the elephant in the room, which is the lack of leadership. Does it only boil down to that? Or is there something more fundamentally wrong with the way democracy is being practiced? I will say one thing. 
No, 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 ma'am. Now, now you must let him speak. Go ahead, Sanjay Jha. He listened I to you. Say one thing on Sanjay Jha. No, no, no. He, you know. No, no. Please I, listen to. I will say one thing on Sanjay Jha. I have huge differences with Sanjay, but I respect him for the fact that he has not made an ideological somersault. I have huge differences with Sanjay. But okay. I respect the fact that he has not made an ideological somersault and which is why I am sitting on a show with him. Because if let, he has, let him, then we can't let him have now a speak. conversation quite frankly. Ma'am, it's only fair that you let him speak. Go ahead, Sanjay Jha. Sure. Is the sure. elephant in the room not being addressed, which is the leadership crisis that Hardik is targeting? He is saying there was nobody there in Gujarat to mentor, to guide the party. Well, Rasri, first and foremost, I will agree with a lot of what Supriya said in terms of the structural fault lines in India's democracy, the regulatory or the media capture or the institutional degradation that has happened since Mr. Modi became Prime Minister. Absolutely in full agreement with her on that. I also will differ with uh, Mr. Hardik Patel. I actually, on lighter way, prefer chicken sandwich to a dogla. But mm -hmm. on, on the serious issue of what really ails the Congress, I will just give you one example of it. Rahul Gandhi, in a speech that he made in Delhi the other day, I think it was at a book launch, where he said, you know, I have been born in power, and I don't seek it at all. I am not hungry for it. And in my opinion, Rajdeep, that statement of Rahul, and I can tell you, I have worked with him earlier, several years ago, and many a times. I mean, this is basically the problem with Rahul Gandhi's leadership. The Congress is a political organization. It is not an NGO. Let's understand that very clearly. Rahul has got every right to be ideological, philosophical, have an abstract view of India, etc., etc. But the truth of life is that where Rahul Gandhi forgets it, and this as a leader you cannot, he cannot be the Congress president and not be aware of the fact that if you want to protect the ideology of the Congress. You know, I'm so bored of hearing Rahul say, or Congress spokesperson say, this is a fight of thought. It is, but if you have to save the thought of thought, then you will have to win. You see, India was more secular, more democratic, more liberal, more progressive, more tolerant under the Congress. I have not said 100% liberal, secular, democratic. The Congress has also made several mistakes. I am not going to deny that. But the truth is, it has changed because the BJP is in power. Therefore, India is now more communal, institutions have been demolished earlier it was like a pocket mar strategy now it's like mafia style of operation so the scale the ruthlessness the brutality what is you, ugly what are you so, trying to say you're trying to say that if you have to take on the bjp you have to be much more ruthless much more a power politician than rahul gandhi is correct in short in short Ra Ra rajdeep congress needs the hunger to win Rahul Gandhi is actually already publicly said he doesn't believe in it. Now, Rahul must understand, he's entitled, he's born in power. He's his father, grandmother, mother, everyone. I'm, of course, not to mention Pandit Nehru. But, you know, you, you cannot tell this to Congress workers. You let, cannot tell this to the veterans in the party. You cannot tell that to me either. Let me, you know, you want to be in power because you want to give the idea of India alive. Right. The Congress seems to be obsessed with the idea of Rahul Gandhi.